Hello, ladies and gentlemen, this is Mike here at Games from Scratch, and today we are checking out the Flax game engine. Now, if you're a regular to this channel, I covered this back at the end of 2020 when Flax 1.0 was released. And if you're not, hey, hit like, subscribe, and all that to keep up to date with the latest and greatest in game development news. Now, this one actually has me somewhat excited because it's got a lot of potential. And to see how far we've come from 1.0 to 1.1 in, again, three or four months' time, it's impressive. And this is going to make some of you very, very happy. Happy. And almost every time I post a video about a game engine where I forget to mention it in, say, like the first minute or two, the question comes up, does it run on Linux? And the answer is now, yes. Yes, it does. This release, this 1.1 release, brings not only Linux support, but full feature parity of Linux support. All the tooling, live coding, all of that stuff, everything works on Linux, uh, specifically uh, the Ubuntu versions, but I imagine it's going to work on all of them. That, that is the tested version. So if you are a Linux developer and you wanted to check out the Flax engine, you now can. The other thing you can see here is the new third-person shooter um, project. It's another thing that was added here. It's pretty straightforward. It is a physics-based third-person shooter that shows you how you can create your own third-person shooter in the Flax engine. Now, in terms of the engine itself, it's pretty straightforward. Here is your scene hierarchy. It's kind of like a hybrid of the Godot node-based approach and a component-based system over here. So a node can have a variety of components attached to it. Those components in turn can have scripts attached to them, uh, such as you see these are a variety of scripts with variables exposed. I can go ahead and edit this script if I so wished. It is integrated with Visual Studio Code, and there you go. Very straightforward. This is a C-sharp example using a series of callbacks. Now, the kicker is, oh, and you'll also notice you can export values out to the editor that can be set in the editor. Uh, there's also C-sharp, C++ live scripting, and an honest-to-God useful visual scripting language here as well, which is nice to see. So uh, let's go just take a quick run of the third person example, then we'll go into um, some of the other uh, new features in this 1.0 release. Now what is staggering is this is mostly the work of one guy. There's more people working on it now. Now this is going to take a while because getting that guy knocked out with just bullets takes a bit of time. There we go. All right. There we go. So as you can see, we've got full physics support. Let's, let's take out the capstone here. Come on, you can do it. Um, yeah, it, it, it's pretty feature complete. There was a few things that were a little bit lacking that have been improved upon. For example, uh, there is new low-level networking support in here. Uh, but I, I think, again, the star of the show for a lot of people is going to be that all of the tooling, everything you see here now runs on Linux as well. And you have this uh, new third-person shooter that actually showcases how you can create that style of game. As I mentioned, I'm not going to go into a ton more depth of uh, how this game engine works because, quite frankly, uh, I have covered it in past. I will link my original uh, video down below. So if you want to check it out and learn more about it, you can. Now, this guy is... It's technically a commercial game engine. Uh, it's if you make more than twenty-five thousand dollars a quarter or a hundred thousand dollars a year, which I guess you would if you made twenty-five thousand dollars a quarter. There is a four percent royalty on it. It is not an open source engine, but it is source available with the source code on GitHub. So definitely one of those things to be aware of. If you are contributing to say another open source project, you probably don't want to to get too close to the code here because uh, you can just kind of get into entanglement. But for most developers, the difference between open source and source and um, source available isn't really that huge. This one takes basically a similar approach to uh, the Unreal game engine. So if you're wondering how the licensing model works, that is how the licensing model works. If you want to go ahead and grab it, it is available at flaxengine.com. Uh, come up here, we'll kind of do a little quick brag sheet of their features, although their choices here are very strange to me in, in some ways. Because uh, seamless C Sharp and C++ scripting, sure. Automatic draw calls and batching and instancing, okay, that's a strange feature there. Every asset async content streaming by default, cross-platform support including Windows, Linux, Android, PS4, Xbox One, Series X, S, and UWP, GPU, light map, baking, visual scripting, VFX tools, nested prefab support, and so on and so forth. The cool thing is you get hot reloading of C Sharp and C++ in the editor, the for, for, uh, full source code is available. Again, source available, not open source. Uh, the engine devs are very active on their uh, Discord channel. So it, 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 uh, like I 
put forward some comments. I think I, I think I asked for a Q and E uh, navigation in in terms of the uh, navigating the world in the editor, and it was added like almost right away. So he's a very responsive fellow. Again, there is the fee structure for it. So it's free. Uh, you pay four percent when you release uh, above the first twenty five k. You earn in a quarter. So that's how they are looking to make money. Uh, Seems reasonable enough. Just to be aware, every different game engine out there has different licensing and different features and pros and cons. So uh, now we're going to take a look at the 1.1 release notes. The key feature, as I mentioned earlier on, is that uh, the editor now runs on Linux. And the cool thing here is, once again, uh, it, so as I say, it runs great on Ubuntu, contains all of the features such as live scripting with C Sharp and C++, hot reload, Visual Studio code integration, scenes editor, game cooking, train editing, <coughs> editing, and much more. It has feature parity with editor on Windows to enable game developers on Linux to create great projects with Flax. That's pretty cool. Uh, unfortunately, they use, well, I guess not really unfortunately, but uh, they use Vulkan for rendering. The old OpenGL GPUs will not work. So something to be aware of. You need to have Vulkan support on your uh, Linux machine. I don't know the current state of Vulkan and Linux. I think that shouldn't be a big issue for most people, but if you're running on an older Intel integrated GPU or something, you're probably going to run into problems there. Uh, they also added a spline tools. Splines are basically universally useful if you need to create paths. Uh, it's a Bezier curve of 3D points with tangents used to create things such as uh, roads, paths, drawing a model over spline curve, uh, rivers, dynamic gameplay components such as this chain shown right here with the with the physics. Um, there's new documentation on the spline handling. Uh, they also added networking support. It's a low-level implementation. So basically this is a .NET framework based game engine, so you had .NET networking all along. So you can still use .NET networking libraries if you wish, but they added in a low-level socket-based library there that is going to be the future foundation of higher-level stuff. So right now you can create uh, clients and servers using their new network API, uh, but there's gonna be more high-level stuff being built on it within this year, which is kind of hilarious. Again, primary, a single developer on this project, and they are outpacing Unity on uh, getting things working great on Linux and for networking, which, okay. Uh, so we got uh, navigation features here, uh, nav meshes. Nav meshes are, as you can see this red part right here, uh, they're polygonal meshes in the world for doing things. You can see as he's moving it around how the, the mesh is recalculating for where collisions would be and how paths can go. It's a way of doing pathfinding in a 3D world. Uh, they added support for multiple nav meshes, uh, nav mesh modifier volumes, nav agent properties and queries, rotated nav meshes, um, new query types such as test path, find random point and find random point around a circle, and then nav agent masking and dynamic nav mesh updates at runtime. Uh, the visual scripting, which by the way is legit usable and in some ways is nice actually. When I was working on a tutorial that I just never finished, and and I still, still intending to, by the way, uh, I used mostly the visual scripting, even though it was brand new, uh, because it's, it's actually kind of nice. If you're new to an engine, you can sort of pull from a menu of options out there. So it's kind of self-documenting in a way. So it legitly is a usable visual scripting system and not just a way to like check a checkbox on a feature list. Um, but now you can bind events into visual scripts to handle uh, trigger volumes or collision events. So you can see right here, when this uh, enabled, when the script is enabled, they grab the current actor and they bind the trigger event. So by binding that, that means now on trigger event, this particular code will run. So it gives you a way of binding events to um, collisions and triggers. Uh, then we got automatic uh, node formatting um, and reroute nodes for uh, connection organizations. So you see here we can do some house cleaning uh, in your, your your setup of your wireless graphs here. I'm sorry, your wireless graph. I don't know what the hell that even means. Your visual graphs uh, there. Uh, the, we got the new third person example. Uh, you can get it through the launcher. Uh, you basically just go to new projects uh, and then uh, it'll be there. Uh, editor improvements, we have a uh, Rider's IDE, it's integrated. If you did not know, Rider, uh, it started life as Project Rider, uh, it's IntelliJ's kind of turning into their game IDE because now it has, it used to be a C-sharp IDE, but then they started adding more and more. So there's support for Unreal Engine blueprints in there and C-sharp in there now and C++ live scripting for Unreal Engine in there now. So in some ways, IntelliJ are just sort of positioning Rider as the IDE for game development. And uh, Flax Engine now supports it. 
uh, UI editing supports prefabs in editor, uh, full debug stack in debug log, new UI transformation editor, uh, script members display on declaration order, live particle preview in scene editor, and so on and so forth. We're starting to get a little bit into the weeds on this one. And there is now a new inbuilt. When do you use inbuilt and when do you use built in? I've never actually known this one. I've always kind of thought that anyone using inbuilt are just being, you know, fancy. Uh, but anyways, new inbuilt. By the way, if you do know, let me know comments down below. I've long since wondered that. But new inbuilt actor that can draw sprites in 3D or 2D, highly customizable and ready to use. So you got kind of even the foundations of the, a bit of a, a 2D game engine at this point. Or of course, using 2D sprites in 3D worlds, such as say uh, billboarded sprites and so on is definitely a useful thing. Uh, we have volumetric fog particles. Nice thing is I don't really have to explain what that is because I have an animated GIF. Uh, so you can now do uh, fog uh, using particle systems right there. And then we get the full blown change logs here. Nice thing is they've got uh, a number more of contributors actually working on the project now. And so for a single developer project that was expanding at a pretty solid and impressive rate, uh, we got more people on board. And so that means it should improve at a better and better rate. Again, of the new Yaggies, so yet another game engine out there, this is one of the ones that I have the most hope for, I guess you could say. Uh, so it's definitely an interesting release, a nice step forward, especially if you are on Linux. And you can see here, it's available at flaxengine.com. On top of that, uh, you can check out their Discord. Uh, I will link that. Where did it go? I know they have a Discord. They don't have it. Oh, it must be here. Discord. Yeah. So they have it there, but they don't have it there. And by the way, if you're one of the developers, you're missing an icon for Discord right here. Uh, but they do have a, a Discord server. You also have the roadmap where they intend to go with things. So if you want to check out the future of the Flax engine, they have a Trello board. So you can see you know, where they're going. It's it's pretty um, transparent in terms of where they're going. And again, it's, it's improving at a pretty impressive update rate. Um, let me go back for a second here. And also, if you are interested, you can head on over to GitHub. Uh, there is a Flax Engine repository. All of the code is available here. Uh, just do be aware that the license is uh, proprietary. Whenever you get into proprietary licensing, uh, yeah, there's there's always a kind of a pitfall or a catch there. Again, I would kind of love to see like just maybe not an OSI license, you know, because it's not open source, but a standard license for closed open source shared projects like this so that you can't make a derived work. I, I, I harped on this in the past, uh, harp on it into the future until it happens, damn it, because not everyone's a lawyer and most of the people writing these custom licenses aren't lawyers either and that's problematic. So it would be lovely to see a universal license for source available type game engines. It seems to come up again and again and again. Someone make it happen, please. So anyways, that is Flax Engine 1.1. It's uh, it's impressive, especially if you are on Linux, because you are now part of the party. Welcome aboard, Linux users. Yay, we have cake. Uh, let me know what you think, and uh, yeah, talk to you all later. Goodbye.